everyone, Christy Winter Scott here for another Big Ten and Ten. We are joined now by head coach Brenda Freeze of the University of Maryland women's basketball team. Coach, thank you for your time today. Oh, always great to be here with you, Christy. Well, you are on the precipice of breaking the all-time win record at the University of Maryland. Chris Weller had 499 wins, and you are right there with that. Let's take a walk down memory lane, shall we? You've had some amazing moments during your storied career as the head coach at the University of Maryland. What experiences and memories stand out to you the most during that time? Um, well, I, I think, I mean, obviously at the top of the list, I mean, uh, you know, was the 2006 national championship, uh, game and, and win. uh, I, I don't think you could have scripted it any better. I mean, when you talked about the rivals that we had in the ACC and really to come through, you know, the final four and have to beat, you know, North Carolina in, in the final four game. And then, uh, the, the matchup with, with Duke and, uh, those rival games between Maryland and Duke and, um, you know, it was an incredible season, obviously, with, with, with that team. I mean, they, they did, had six overtimes. Um, that game, you know, ended in overtime with, with the national championship win. So, um, obviously, you know, that, that whole run was, uh, you know, pretty surreal to be able to look back and, and reflect on. And the overtime is our time. That was the theme that year because of all of the gritty wins you all had that season. Who was the first person you called after that big win? I know people were calling you. You know, I know your phone was like blowing up, but who was the first person you called after that national championship? Um, you know, I don't remember who I called, but I mean, I will say is uh, the first people I celebrated with, were with my family. And, uh, you know, a rookie mistake that we made, uh, you know, we got back to the hotel room and thought we were going to celebrate and, and enjoy some drinks and uh, got back and uh, nothing was open. It was so late, you know, so, uh, you know, we had one, you know, bottle of wine that was complimentary that was in our room. I remember we each got a sip to, to be able to celebrate. And um, then the game was already being, uh, you know, uh, aired a, a second time. So we sat up all night and, uh, you know, uh, in my suite uh, with my family, just uh, reliving the game. Oh man, that's that's awesome though. But you celebrated, so that's the that's the most important part of that. But with that being said, what was the biggest hurdle that season for that particular team? I know they were very young, freshmen and sophomores, but what was the, the biggest hurdle you would say for that year? You know, I think um, you know, just believing that that they could beat anyone. And, you know, I think you know, probably, you know, one memory that probably sticks out in my mind is I remember when we played Boston College that year uh, and the day of shoot around, I had our Dobo um, organized so we could go get into the garden. And, you know, I was able to, to take the team in and we sat, you know, in the garden and, you know, I just kind of shared with them the vision that the final four was going to be held here. And, um, we could be, you know, a team that would be watching from the outside, just like we were right now looking down on the court, or, you know, we could believe that we were going to be one of those teams in the final four playing on this very court. And so, um, I don't know what made me think of it, you know, uh, you know, you know, probably my husband, you know, probably gave me the nugget cause he's really good at that of, um, having that kind of wisdom. But, um, you know, I think it was definitely one to be able to kind of put, um, you know, in, in their mind, you know, that it was something that I believed in them that, that they could accomplish. Speaking of the professional level of basketball, you have done an amazing job with your program and your, your players to go to that next level. I mean, 14 players into the WNBA ranks. What is it about Maryland that prepares these WNBA players so well? Well, you know, I, I, I love the, the player development piece in our program. I mean, it's a, a huge piece, you know, that um, is really, really important to us, you know, that our players know when they come in from uh, their freshman year to the time that they leave, that they are going to be developed in every single area to be prepared for the next level. Um, and I, I love the fact that, you know, when you talk to the GMs and, and the coaches in the league, um, they spend a lot of time talking that our players are prepared. I mean, they're no nonsense. They, they know what it takes to be a pro. Um, they, these four to five years at Maryland uh, prepare them, you know, for what's out ahead. And, 
Um, fortunately for us, you know, we know what it takes. I mean, we've had every position has gone on into the league. So we, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a point guard, a, a wing, a forward, um, we're going to be able to develop you. Um, and if you're willing to put the work in, uh, you, you know, great things lie ahead for you. I know you keep in great contact with your alum, not just the WNBA ones, but all of them. Uh, they just love the family atmosphere at Maryland. But the WNBA players, like when you have them as freshmen, is there some kind of thing like you took the kids to the garden? Is there some kind of visual, visualization situation that you have with your freshmen who come in or in the recruiting process where you say, if you have aspirations to be in the WNBA, this is the blueprint for that. Yeah, um, you know, obviously we're able to to share that, you know, uh, you know, on visits and uh, you know, video and 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 how we feel like um, we will be able to to make their game better. Um, I think one of the other things that really separates, you know, our program is that you know our players and our pros come back. So you know, they're gonna from their freshman year on they're going to see an Alyssa Thomas come back and they're going to practice against her. You know, Marissa Coleman, Lynetta Kaiser, Crystal Langhorn, um, they all come back. They, they all, you know, will, will jump into a practice here and there. They'll still use our strength coach and our athletic trainer for recovery. So um, they, they come back, they speak to our team. So there's so many elements there that um, are really important that, you know, these freshmen are going to learn, you know, in that process while they're here of ultimately becoming a pro. And how amazing is that for you to be able to see them at their best at the professional level and winning championships? I mean, the last two seasons in particular, you've had four or five players in the WNBA finals. So someone's going to win, right? You're going to have <laughs> some champs. But, but that just has to be a, such a proud moment for you. It is. I mean, it's the, the ultimate dream of a coach that when your players go on, um, and, and play at that next level in the WNBA. I mean, it's like winning a national championship for college. And why wouldn't you in your heart of hearts, you know, uh, you know, be rooting for your players to uh, win the ultimate world championship in the WNBA. And um, we have been, we've been really fortunate. You know, I liken to say, you know, our players know how to win. Um, they, they, you know, uh, they've, you know, spent a lot of time in our program winning. Um, so they expect nothing less, but they also, you know, I'm proud of the fact that they know how to work. They, they know how to take care of their bodies. I mean, when you leave here, um, there, there's no, you know, um, you don't have the treatment like you have in college, you know, at the next level because you have to be disciplined enough to know what kind of pregame meal you're going to eat and what your recovery is going to look like. So um, I do love the fact that I think we prepare them for what lies ahead. As you look over your career and the challenges that have occurred during that time, where does COVID fall along the lines of being the most challenging situation? I mean, unlike no other season, you know, and I said, you know, I've, I've gotten to coach some really incredible teams. I'm really blessed. Um, this, this team's going to be in my heart of hearts for a long time um, because they have gone through COVID and, I mean, it's been amazing to be with a team that comes in with the resiliency that this group has, no drama, just wants to be in the gym, wants to be coached, wants to spend as many hours as possible, every single one of them. Um, so it, it's been a season like no other, but it's also been pretty special to be able to watch them navigate uh, through a pandemic. And how do you see the Big Ten tournament looking and the NCAA tournament looking in? What kind of things do you do creatively to celebrate with the team on big wins? Because there, there are no crowds there. You know, what kind of things do you try to materialize for them in that way to keep it spirited? Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, I think you do. You celebrate your wins a lot more. Um, you know, and, and we do, you do in, in unusual ways, right? Because it's like, you, it's not like you can go out and celebrate at a restaurant and um, do the things that you typically have done before. But I know we love up our kids. Uh, we celebrate them as much as possible because there are so many unknowns of um, what lies ahead for us, you know, come March. So, I mean, we really try to, to take each day as a precious gift and, um, you know, being able to, to celebrate right now. Mm. And looking forward to that magical number of 500 wins. And I know it may not be something that you're, you're looking for personally and saying, well, I, this is a goal of mine, but 
what does that what does that mean for you to have that staring at you right in the mirror? <laughs> um, you know, it's it's really humbling. You know, when I, I took this job, I never imagined getting to, you know, when Chris Weller was at 499, I was like, no way would I, you know, ever think I was going to um, come close to that. You know, I was just trying to prove myself that I would hopefully get another contract extension and Maryland wouldn't fire me. So, um, you know, I, I think it, it, it speaks volumes, obviously, our program. I think the, the thing I'm most proud of is the consistency factor. Um, you know, these players, you know, the coaches that I've had in uh, the 19 years that I've been here, um, the support staff, you know, getting people to line up for a common goal uh, to, to be successful, I think is, you know, one of the things that I think is the most satisfying part uh, when you talk about 500 wins. That's just amazing. And first of all, I, I want to be the first to say, as an alum, um, that I am super proud of the way you have carried this program over the 19 seasons that you've been at the helm. And the sustainability of excellence is just amazing to see. And it's not just me saying that, but I have a, a great web of alumni friends who are, are saying the same thing. So I just wanted you to know that personally, uh, just to know that uh, we are super proud of how you are carrying on the Maryland tradition. Uh, well, thank you, Chrissy. That, that means a lot. And, uh, you know, uh, what well, we say, fear the turtle, right? Uh, you know, we, you know the, we love everything about this program. Thank you so much for your time today, Coach, and congratulations. All right. Thank you. Thank you.